This is the broadcasting service of the Syrian Arab Republic of in Damascus, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. <laughs> Our 60 minute English hour transmission for tonight, Wednesday, the 11th of June 2014, is on the air from 23 hours till midnight Damascus local time. That is from 20 hours till 21 hours Greenwich Mean Time. <laughs> We transmit our program through the following satellites, Russian Express AM22, orbit location 53 degrees east, frequency 12,545 horizontal, symbol rate 3,000 directed to the Arab homeland, North Africa and Europe. Arabsat 5C, orbit location 20 degrees east, frequency 3,934L, symbol rate 27,500 directed to Africa. Nysat, orbit location 7 degrees point 2 west, frequency 10,922 vertical. Symbol rate 27,500 directed to the Arab homeland, North Africa, and South Europe. <laughs> You can also receive our transmission through the following satellites. Galaxy 19, orbit location 97 degrees west, frequency 12,146 vertical, symbol rate 22,000 directed to North America and Canada. Hispasat 1C, orbit location 30 degrees west, frequency 12,132 horizontal, symbol rate 27,500 directed to South America. Asiasat 5, orbit location 100 degrees, 0.5 east, frequency 3,000. 820 vertical, symbol rate 27,500 directed to Asia. And Intersat 19, orbit location 166 degrees east, frequency 12,726 horizontal, symbol rate 28,066 directed to Australia. <laughs> You can download a recording of our program through the internet by logging onto our websites, which are www.syriaonline.sy. Then click the link Radio Programs. The other alternative website, www.radio-damascus.net. Our program for tonight includes the following. Our news bulletin after this opening, which will be read by Rashid Haider and Basim Bagdash, to be followed by news and views and then by press review. At around 30 minutes past 23 hours, Damascus local time, you'll be listening to a new edition of our weekly program, Palestine for Every Mind. After that, you're invited to listen to a collection of musical breaks and varieties selected by our sound technician, Lu'ay Arabi, until 2 minutes to midnight. That is when we present our new summary and sign off, as usual, with the national anthem, exactly at midnight, Damascus local time, which is 21 hours Greenwich Mean Time. Consent service of the Syrian Arab Republic, and now stay tuned for the news.
Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our news bulletin for tonight, to be presented jointly by Basim Bagdash and Rashid Haider. President Bashar Assad received today two cables of congratulations from the President of the Myanmar Federation, Thane Shain, and the Acting President of the Republic of Abkhazia, Valery Baganda, on the occasion of His Excellency's victory in the presidential elections. President Thein Shein expressed in the cable his confidence that the friendship and cooperation relations between the two countries would be enhanced in the interest of both peoples in the coming years. On his part, Abkhazia acting president Valery Bagamba expressed his confidence that the election of President al-Assad for a new constitutional term in office will enhance peace inside Syria and its position at the international level. He voiced his interest in establishing friendship and cooperation relations between the two countries. President Lesset also received cables of congratulation from the Foreign Ministry of the People's Republic of Duntik and from the International and Arab Parties Commissions and Figures on the occasion of his victory in the presidential elections. The cables affirmed that the big support expressed for President Assad by the Syrian voters from various factions confirmed that the Syrians actually voted for the policy of heroic struggle against international terrorism and those collaborating with it for the sake of safeguarding Syria's sovereignty and territorial integrity. In implementation of the Legislative Decree No. 22 for the year 2014, which allows for granting a general amnesty on crimes committed before the 9th of, the tw of June 24th, 274 prisoners were released from Damascus Central Prison as a first batch. Also in implementation of the same decree, the first batch of prisoners was released from Aleppo Central Prison. Aleppo First Attorney General Ibrahim Hilal confirmed that 300 prisoners were released from Aleppo Central Prison adding that the decision has been made by two judicial committees which closely reviewed the files of the prisoners according to the directives of President Bashar al-Assad. Charged Affairs of the Syrian Mission to the UN Office in Geneva, Mohammed al Mohammed, has criticized the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Navi Pele, for continuing to ignore the role of the armed terrorist groups in the creation and continuation of the crisis in Syria. More details are in the following report. Chargé d'affaires of the Syrian mission to the UN office in Geneva, Mohamed Mohamed has criticized UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Navi Pillai, for continuing to ignore the role of armed terrorist groups in the creation and continuation of the crisis in Syria. This came in a statement during the 26th session of the Human Rights Council, held on Tuesday in response to Pillai's allegations that the Syrian state is ignoring calls for ending violence and finding a peaceful solution for the crisis and her talk about the situation in Aleppo province. al muhammadi criticized Pillai for equating the sovereign Syrian state, which is carrying out its constitutional duty of protecting its citizens, with the terrorist groups supported by certain countries, voicing surprise over her refraining from condemning these groups' crimes. He said that Pillai's reference to external forces on the floor of foreign fighters as a cause for the intensification of the crisis is a late and unaccepted step and that she continues in her unprofessional and biased reports and statements on false and undocumented sources, thereby covering up terrorist crimes. Regarding Aleppo, al Mohammed said that what is actually happening in Aleppo is a group punishment imposed by terrorist groups and the state supporting them, noting that these groups admitted to depriving citizens in Aleppo from drinking water because they support the state. al Mohammed stressed that the Syrian government had called for dialogue since the beginning of the crisis and engaged in talks in Geneva with serious dedication, in addition to carrying out reconciliations and settlements, the most recent of which having restored security to Homs' old city. In Aleppo, units of the Syrian Arab army foiled an infiltration attempt by terrorists into an orphanage in El Ramun and the Sahara Charity, killing and wounding dozens of terrorists and destroyed an armored vehicle used by them. Syrian Arab army units also confronted a terrorist attack by armed gunmen in the village of Azizi and the surroundings of the air defense battalion in Azan, inflicting heavy losses upon them. Units of the Syrian Arab army targeted terrorist gatherings in Aquarius, Mari'a, al Awaji, al Misalmiye, and the old city in Aleppo, destroying a weapon cache full of explosive devices and ammunition in Karmim Yassar, in addition to destroying a number of cars in Khan al Asal, Ard al Nana'i, and Darit Azze, killing and wounding scores of terrorists. 
In Dara, units of the Syrian Arab army killed and wounded a number of terrorists who are affiliated to the so-called Nahal Battalion inside the town in Dara countryside. Syrian Arab army units also targeted terrorist gatherings east of the Nubia school in the refugees camp in Dara al-Balad, killing dozens and destroying their criminal equipment. On the other hand, Syrian Arab army units continued their operations in al Mleha town in Damascus countryside to cut off all supply routes to the terrorists. The most important is Jisreen al Mleha road, which has fallen under the control of the Syrian Arab army. International Parliament for Peace and Security Deputy Foreign Minister Haytham Abu Saeed has called again for stopping financial, logistic and arms supply for the terrorist fear groups in Syria and Iraq, which has become a clear threat against the peoples and the countries of the area. In a statement, Abu Saeed warned some of the countries which are supporting those groups that they would be directly held responsible for the crimes committed by the Takfir groups. He pointed out that the plan of dividing Iraq is supported by some Gulf countries along with some Western states. Meanwhile, the head of the fighting or head of the Fighting Terrorism Coordination Unit in France, Luc Garnier, has warned of the danger threatening the European country's national security, especially France, if the European terrorists who are fighting within the terrorist armed groups in Syria return back, pointing to the tremendous challenge facing the French security in fighting what is described by the Le Figaro newspaper as the ghost of jihadism. In a talk with the Le Figaro newspaper, Garnier clarified that in France there are hundreds of people wishing to go to jihad in Syria, as they are now under supervision, adding that there are about 320 French extremists in Syria. He said that some European jihadists, including French, are being trained by the Al-Qaeda organization to carry out terrorist attacks in Europe. Back to you, Rashid. Thanks, Raith Bassam. Thank you very much. The foreign expert ministry has expressed serious condemnation of the terrorist acts Iraq has been exposed to within the framework of what the ministry said, a world conspiracy against the Iraqi and Syrian peoples represented and a terrorist invasion that targets the Iraqi people's unity and the country's infrastructure. In a statement, the ministry voiced serious support for the Iraqi government, army and people and their confrontation of the terrorists affirming that Iraq is facing the same foreign sites which supported terrorism that Syria is facing, emphasizing its determination to fight the terrorism against it and to continue defending the Syrian people. Syria, the statement added, it reiterates its full solidarity with Iraq and its readiness to cooperate with it to confront terrorism. At the conclusion of its statement, the ministry said, Syria calls on the UN Security Council and the UN Secretary General to issue clear decisions that condemn such terrorist acts and to adopt immediate measures against the countries that support and sponsor such terrorist groups and to question them and compel them to hold their financial and military support to them, which threatens the international peace and security in the region and the world. It is to be noted that the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant organization had yesterday taken control of the cities of Nineveh and Mosul, causing the deportation of a large number of Iraqi families. The organization also took control of al Hawaja province and five other districts in Kirkuk governorate, triggering a state of utmost alert that was declared by the Prime Minister Nur al who also called on the parliament to announce a state of emergency in the country. The concern over the situation has meanwhile been expressed by the U.S. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Back to us for more news. Thank you very much, Rashid. Prime Minister Wa El Halaki has discussed with the Chinese ambassador in Damascus, Wang Qijian, ways of bilateral means and the possibility of expanding trade exchange between the two countries. Referring to the recent presidential elections, El Halaki said, following the success of this democratic experience, Syria is now living a new historical phase that lays down the foundation for the construction of a new Syria, which requires from the government to prepare development plans and programs which means meet the aspirations of the Syrian people who have stood fast in the face of terrorism and the economic blockade. The Prime Minister called on Syria's friends, particularly China, to contribute to the phase of reconstruction to be accomplished with the efforts of the Syrians and the assistance of their friends. al halaki referred to the prospects of investment in Syria in all domains, particularly in the sectors of construction, communication and electricity energy. On his part, Ambassador Ki Jian voiced his country's desire to develop its economic relations with Syria, open new cooperation prospects, and establish real partnerships between businessmen and companies in both countries. 
thus to realize full integration in all fields. He particularly referred to China's quest to revive the land and sea, Silk Road and Syria's crucial role in this respect. Russia's permanent representative to the UN, Vitaly Cherkin, has said that Moscow has put a new formula for its draft law at the UN on improving the humanitarian situation in Syria. Speaking to reporters on Tuesday, Cherkin said the Russian mission set a new formula which has added to the aforementioned resolution, hoping that permanent members at the Security Council would accept the ideas presented in the resolution. He pointed out that one of the draft laws articles prepared by Russia aims to support local reconciliations in Syria and may stipulate opening humanitarian passages. The Russian official affirmed his country's readiness to support any proposal that aims at improving the humanitarian situation in Syria. Rashid? Thank you, Basim. The Iranian foreign ministry has renewed its support for Syria and its war against terrorism and its stances that encourages a political solution to the crisis in Syria. In a weekly press conference, Iran's foreign ministry spokeswoman, Marbiya Afghan, asserted Iran's clear stance towards that development of the situation in Syria, emphasizing that the irresponsible support provided by some countries to the armed terrorist groups in Syria has led to the spread of terrorism in the region. Afham stressed the need for consultations among the Islamic states, who are members of the Islamic Cooperation Organization, in order to find a solution to the problem of terrorism which has plagued the countries and the region, pointing out that Iran has warned against the risk of supporting the terrorist groups, especially as terrorism has no specific or limited place. On a related issue and in a telephone call with the UN Assistant Secretary General and Deputy Emergency Relief Coordinator Valerie Amos, Iranian Assistant Foreign Minister for Arab and African Affairs Hussein Amir Abdullahian discussed the issue of providing humanitarian assistance to Syria and the necessity of coordination in this respect. Iranian media sources said that the telephone call came ahead of the visit scheduled to be paid by Amos to Tehran with the aim of holding more consultations to coordinate between the two sides in the field of delivering humanitarian assistance to Syria. Now, ladies and gentlemen, over to our final interview with Basim. Thank you very much, Rashid. The Czech Prime Minister has asserted that there are no signs that Russia intends to attack any NATO countries, a fact that urges those countries to have a suitable response regarding the crisis in Ukraine. The Czech Prime Minister said that the right response to the Ukrainian crisis does not come by returning to the Cold War and building a new iron curtain between the European Union and Russia stressing that the future of both sides, bilateral relations, cannot be solved by enhancing the military NATO presence on the European Union's eastern borders. He pointed out that the European Union can help Ukraine in many ways, but it cannot solve all its internal problems, expressing his conviction that there is no military solution for the Ukrainian crisis, as the only way is political agreement. And with that item on Ukraine, ladies and gentlemen, we conclude our news bulletin for tonight. Thank you for listening.
unity in any country of the world is manifested through the popular rallying around the issues that have a national type or character. In fact, what has been witnessed on the Syrian arena of interaction with the presidential elections confirms that issues, as every objective observer, has felt this situation, whether in Syria or abroad, through the joy and manifestations of the power masses or individuals. Since the start of the activities of the constitutional entitlement to the presidential election, days have proved that the Syrians, who suffered so much from the terrorism, murder and systematic destruction, have not abandoned the, their genuine national traditions, as the killing machine and destruction have not been able to steal their national spirits and values. The campaign of media deception and falsification launched against Syria was not either able to make the Syrian people lose their sight in spite of the modern technology used in this campaign. It is to be said that the Syrians have been brave in their dealings with all these tragedies and actually targeting forms of standing side by side in the face of the global war against their country. The Syrian national unity, which we consider one of the most important elements of our strength in the face of the internal and external challenges, has been in its best shape through the days of the national entitlement, as the whole world knows now that the Syrians, during the calamities, are one hand, one heart, with no, uh, actually with an undivided national will. That was News and Views from Damascus Radio.
عيدهم السلع يا كايدهم خليهم يشكرونا علمهم اصول الحب علمهم اصول الحب اصلهم درس بعيونا Today's newspapers highlight the following front page headlines. President Al-Assad receives cables of congratulations from Castro, Karzai and international and Arab parties, commissions and prominent figures. President Al-Assad receives an Nouri and Hajar affirming that the multi-party elections represent a sublime experience and the biggest victor is the people. President Al-Assad issues a law exempting the cooperative agricultural bank's loans of interest and delay penalties. Our mission to the UN in Geneva affirms that Belize sources are faked and undocumented and continue to ignore the terrorist crimes. The People's Assembly members praise the presidential elections as a victory for the homeland's pride and dignity. 
Addressing the International Labour Conference, the Minister of Labour says the terrorist war has inflicted damage on various sectors and the Director General's report has ignored the reality of what is happening in Syria. Celebrations continue over the victory of Dr. Bashar al-Assad in the presidential elections. The participants affirm that the Syrians are united in the face of terrorism. Arab figures, parties and forces stress that electing President al-Assad is an evidence that he is chosen as the leader of the Arab nationalist project. The government approves the communication contract presented by the Chinese PCCW. Al-Halqi underlines the need to rehabilitate the services infrastructure and delivering the relief aid. Russia is working on a new formula for a humanitarian draft resolution at the UN Security Council to support the reconciliation process in Syria. The terrorist Daesh organization takes control of most of Mosul's quarters. Kimun is concerned and Washington sees in it a threat to the region. Al-Maliki declares a state of utmost alert and the Iraqi army starts a security operation on a wide scale. Syrian children in the neighboring countries, a meaningless life, a brokery card and a source of begging. A Czech journalist says electing President al-Assad has dealt a painful blow to the American diplomacy. Europe, Australia and the USA are on the alert. The five eyes is meant to confront the danger of the extremists coming back from Syria. An inner page editorial in Al Thawra refers to the recent declaration by the American advisor for national security affairs, Susan Rice, that her country has been presenting both lethal and non-lethal weapons to the terrorist groups. Such declaration, the paper says, was not surprising for the Syrians as it is known that Washington is the one that leads the conspiracy against Syria and uses for its implementation all the barbaric methods and tools that may spread chaos and destroy the state's establishments in service of its interests and colonialist schemes and for the sake of the Zionist entity's security. Rice's confession, the paper goes on, confirms the falsehood of Obama's allegations to the contrary. It brings to the surface Washington's earnest effort to prolong the fabricated crisis in Syria through supporting the Takfiri terrorists and obstructing the efforts aimed at finding a political solution that meets the Syrians' aspirations in building their future away from foreign intervention, the paper asserts. That was a review of the Sudan local press issued in Damascus this morning. Moscow's radio presence. Palestine forever in mind. A weekly program prepared to you by Khaled Faiz and read by Lamasai. With the company of sound engineer Hussam Khouri. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon has expressed deep concern over Israel's plans to build new satellite units in the occupied West Bank and East Al Quds, Jerusalem, urging Tel Aviv to freeze its illegal construction activities. Ben's spokesman Stephen Dudirak said in a statement that as the United Nations has reiterated on many occasions the building of settlements on occupied territory is 
illegal uh, under international law. Earlier in the day, the Israeli regime ordered its officials to implement plans uh, for the construction of 1,800 settler units uh, in the occupied Persian territories only hours after the Israeli housing uh, ministry published uh, tenders from the construction of some 1,500 settler units in the West Bank and East al -Quds. The UN Secretary General calls on Israel to, head, to heed the calls of the international community to free settlements activities and abide by its commitments under international law. Meanwhile, the European Union has also called on the Israeli regime to reverse its plans for building new settler units in the occupied Persian territories, saying that EU calls on the Israeli territories or authorities to reverse this decision and to direct all their efforts towards an early resumption of the peace talks. Israel claimed that the move was a response to the formation of Persian unity government. In April, Persian factions Fatah and Hamas signed an agreement to end years of rivalry and form a unity government. Angrily by the unity pack, uh, pact between uh, rival Persian factions Hamas and Fatah, the Tel Aviv regime uh, suspended the so-called peace talks with the Persian authorities on April the 24th and uh, threatened to impose further sanctions against Palestinians. The EU said that it is deeply disappointed by Israel's plans to build over 3,000 settler units on the occupied Persian territory, saying this move is unhelpful to peace efforts. Palestinian official Hanan Ashrawi said the Palestinian Liberation Organization, PLO, will appeal to the United Nations Secretary Council against Israel's plans to build more settler units. Success of Israeli governments have been turning deaf ear and blind eye to all international calls and demanded the Islamist regime to halt the racist aggressive policy of seizing Persian lands and building and constructing illegal Jewish settlements to change the geographic and demographic status of the occupied Arab territories. That's all for tonight. Please stay tuned for the next week. Best wishes from sound engineer Hassan Mahoud.
Radio, the broadcasting service of the Syrian Arab Republic. Before we sign up for the national anthem, here is a final look at the news summary. 
President Bashar al-Assad receives two cables of congratulation from the President of the Myanmar Federation and the Acting President of the Republic of Abkhazia on the occasion of His Excellency's winning in the presidential elections. President al-Assad also receives cables of congratulation from the Foreign Ministry of the People's Republic of Donetsk and from international and Arab parties, commission and figures on the occasion of his winning in the presidential elections. Shahjad Affair of the Syrian Mission to the UN Office in Geneva, Mohammed al Mohammed criticizes the UN Higher Commissioner for Human Rights, Navi Pillay, for continuing to ignore the role of armed terrorist groups in the creation and continuation of the crisis in Syria. Head of the Fighting Terrorism Coordination Unit in France, Luc Garnier, warns of the danger which threatens the European countries' national security if the European terrorists return from Syria to their home countries. And the Syrian Foreign Ministry expresses Syria's condemnation of the terrorist acts which Iraq was exposed to. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of our transmission for tonight. Until we meet again tomorrow at the same time and on the same frequencies, we wish you all the best from Damascus Radio, the broadcasting service of the Syrian Arab Republic. Good night.